Bonjour à tous et bienvenue sur Web Marketing Tuto. Donc aujourd'hui je suis en présence de André Way. Bonjour André. Hi. And uh, I'll continue in English for the rest of the interview. So André is uh, one of the best implementers I know in terms of uh, implementing analytics. And um, he's going to give us uh, a walkthrough today of what's the process, process of, uh, an of an implementation and uh, what are the main big steps and what to think about for them. And uh, well, maybe first, can you just present yourself and what's your role here at sure. Cardinal Path? Uh, so I'm a senior web analyst at Cardinal Path, focusing mainly on um, implementations, uh, specifically an expert in Google Analytics implementations. Uh, I've been working here for about five years now. Um, started off as a web developer and then moved into the analytics space. Okay. Uh, So just in terms of my job, I do everything from business requirements gathering to solution design and implementation as well. Yeah. Yeah, and you work with very big clients who have like very specific needs? Uh, yeah, I worked with uh, a lot of uh, varying clients, um, things like content sites, um, uh, classified sites, uh, e-commerce sites, uh, lead generation sites, whole, whole different variety of, of sites. Types of sites. Nice. And so, um, what are the main steps you go through uh, for the implementation? So, the first thing that you do is you go through what we call a business requirements document or business requirements gathering. Mm -hmm. And really, what that is is talking with key business stakeholders. So, it could be the marketing team, the SEO team, paid search team, even as high as up as you can go, or um, you know, if you need to talk to an executive or a president. And really finding out what are the goals of the company itself, what that company does, right? Yeah. what drives the success in that company. And then getting more specific, how does that filter to the website itself or the, uh, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a website, it could be you know, um, an iOS app or a Blackberry app, anything that we can measure using Google Analytics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an interesting point. So you don't just track things on the website, you track all digital, right? Yeah, we focus on all digital and of course the holy grail of tying that digital back to the offline and putting that all into your data warehouse and everything like that. So really understanding the business needs is the first thing. If you don't understand what drives success and what's going to be measured, then you can potentially just develop and track everything and what we call <laughs> clutter in the implementation. Right? Yeah, so, yeah. So it's key to say, uh, the key point is to focus on what's important. Mm -hmm. Uh, so once you've gathered that, uh, it's good to then document in business terms um, what was discussed during the stakeholder interviews, and that's what we consider the uh, what we call the business requirements document or um, the KPI framework. From there, we now know what we want to track. The next question is how we want to track it, and what we then do is what we call a solution design, and a solution design just documents the features and functionalities Google Analytics that we're going to use, right? And this doesn't necessarily apply just to Google Analytics. All of these steps are pretty much generic enough that you can apply to Site Catalyst, Web Trends, uh, pretty much any analytics tool. Okay. Right? So basically the SAE is to map everything that you set up as a business objectives in terms of how to implement it. Yeah, exactly. So uh, in the business objectives, we might say we want to track video downloads. Uh, okay, well, we'll track that as an event, and here are the different events that we'll track. Play, pause, well, not pause, but play, complete, and then potentially percentages complete. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they, it's an e-commerce site, and they say, we want to track add to carts. Okay, well, do we track add to carts as a page view, right, uh, potentially, or you track it as an event? Well, of course, you track it as an event. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe we need to send in additional information for when an item is added to cart, right? So maybe we want to know things like the SKU, the name, the color, um, the size, right? Well, with stat let's, let's, let's take, for example, standard classic Google Analytics, where we only have five custom variables to use, right? We could easily say, well, we want to track all those things in custom variables, page-level custom variables. Yeah. Oh, well, we don't actually have enough. So what do we have to do? Well, let's then push some of that information into the event label instead, right? So before you just go ahead and implement things, 
it's good to plan it out, and that's what the solution design does. It helps you to plan it out and figure out where you're going to put all this information so that A, you can foresee these errors before you actually implement and then corrupt your data or, or put in bad data. And B, it also then documents for anybody who needs to look at the reports, how do I find this data, where do I look for this data yeah. in the reports. So that's really what that, uh, uh, what that solution design document does. Yeah, that's really important. So they, they can then use all the information they get from their implementation. They know where to get it. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Okay. Um, so now we know how we're going to actually implement the various features and functionalities. Then it goes into implementation, right? Um, for us, we don't actually put physical code onto the website in terms of actually changing like their server-side code. Mm -hmm. All we can provide is either JavaScript files or if we're using um, Google Tag Manager or some tag management system, we'll tell them, okay, put this snippet of code here um, and, and, do, and, and we'll do the rest basically, right? Mm -hmm. um, so when we're doing implementation, it's more for us just documenting out um, what needs to put, be put where. So we now you know, always use a data layer. Right, so on certain pages, we'll tell them to expose certain pieces of information. So, again, I'm just going to use an e-commerce because that's the simplest one. On a product details page, we if we want to know things like the SKU, the product name, the um, the color, or any any other piece of information, we'll tell them to expose that through the data layer, mm -hmm. and it requires their backend developers to expose that and, yeah. and to implement that. Um, if we don't have access to, at all to the backend developers, then what we have to do is try to do what's called DOM scraping. So looking at the structure of the HTML page and finding pieces of information that we want. Hopefully it's there on the page mm -hmm. and we can get to it in some way or form. And if we can, then that's how we would implement it. So we, they, there's a, um, there's some people that argue you shouldn't use DOM scraping and you should use a data layer, and there are others that say we should use DOM scraping and not a data layer, right? Because there there, there are pros and cons of both. So with a data layer, uh, it's more intense. You still have to go back to the developers to get changes in place um, for for um, data layer elements, mm -hmm. right? Um, but the the implementation is more reliable, right? It's rare. It's less likely to change. Yeah. Whereas with DOM scraping, if they change the layout of the page, all of a sudden your implementation breaks, and then you have to remember to go and update your implementation. Yeah, so and that's a risk for them and for us. Yeah, yeah it's a risk, um, and, and there's risk for both sides, really. So what I should typically try to do is all the key and important uh, metrics that we're going to track, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I will try to get them to implement a data layer, as well as identify certain elements that I need to track, like button clicks, using um, using classes or, or HTML IDs. Yeah. So then, at least I know those are going to be there and they're going to be consistent. Doesn't mean it's not going to change. So, so, you, so you ask them to add a class or add the ID to an object. Yeah, exactly. So and and typically I will. I'll use classes, um, and I'll give a class a specific kind of value or or name, mm -hmm. so that it's less likely that the designers or the front end developers will touch that class. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no, of course, there's no guarantee that they won't touch it. But you know, when it says like tracking as a, as part of the class name, yeah. then they're like, oh, yeah. you know what? It's it's there. I'm probably not gonna yeah, yeah. touch it. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of try to try to take a hybrid approach of you know anything that's important that I can get the developers to, I'll put into the data layer. Mm -hmm. Everything else I can do through DOM scraping, and um, uh, if I need to. Okay, nice. So we went from the BRD to the SDD to the actual implementation. Okay. Uh, what are the next steps? If there uh, are, if it's necessary, <laughs> of course. Well, no, it's definitely necessary because when you implement. They'll, it's never going to be 100 percent correct. Mm -hmm. So, you we like to tip, uh, to to get access to either staging or QA server yeah. so that we can actually test the implementation out um, and make it very important. <laughs> <laughs> it's very important, yes. Uh, and you test it out and make sure everything is firing. And 
there are different types of tools you can use to, to QA, right? Um, of course, you could just use real-time analytics in the Google Analytics reports uh, just to get, to see if the hits are firing in with the data that you want. Um, but if you really want to see it as it's going through what we call it through the wire, or basically as the request is being sent mm -hmm. and what is being sent, um, you can use a number of tools. So WASP by Stefan Hamel, who is uh, part of uh, who is part of the uh, Cardinal Path uh, group. Yeah. Um, very nice tool to use, easy to use, and yeah, um, yeah. it's very pretty useful. obvious. Yeah. Uh, there is also what's called you can use a. Uh, in Chrome, the Network Inspector tab, yeah. um, mm -hmm. that's another tool to use. Uh, Firefox also has a Network tab in its, uh, in its Firebug tool, uh, which is also pretty much achieves the same type of uh, functionality. And Internet Explorer, in their developer tools, also has what they call the Network Capture mm -hmm. um, functionality. But that one I don't find as useful. Okay. So instead, for that one, and if I'm testing on Windows, I'll use um, a separate tool, um, which is called uh, Fiddler 2. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so Fiddler 2 is basically it's an HTTP proxy that you set up, mm -hmm. and it listens for all kind of internet connections and web connections that are going on through your browsers, and then so it reconfigures your Internet Explorer when it's running to listen, and then I can just then filter for my um, Google Analytics. Tests. And then inspect and see exactly what's being fired off. My phone is ringing. <laughs> oh, there you go. Uh, I don't know if that'll screw up our. Uh... Okay, great. So we went through uh, the four first steps. Well, the four steps where we have everything, and then your implementation is in place. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a last step that's really important to go through? The last step, if you're not the one doing the analysis is to actually walk through the implementation with the people who will be doing the analysis. Mm -hmm. They can read the solution design, but our experience is no one actually reads that thing. <laughs> so it's good to walk them through it and say, here is how we're tracking everything. Here is how you find this piece of data. right? Um, and the other important step, of course, is to always maintain your implementation. Changes to the website look at it and say, is it important to track? If you're going to track it, again, you go through those five steps of business requirements, documentation, mm -hmm. what are we going to try to capture and why, Yeah. solution design, how are we going to capture it, implement, then cure it. Yeah. So it's always an ongoing cycle. Yeah. So you have always your SDD up to date and you can always refer back to it. Yeah, exactly. And always making sure that you, you, know, you keep uh, change um, notes of what was changed to the SED in the SED itself as well as you know, use annotations in Google Analytics so that you can note when specific mm -hmm. changes occurred yeah. and evidence of accessible to everybody else in the, um, who has access to that. Uh, yeah, that's very really important actually. It seems simple, but just having this annotation can be so useful and it save you so much time sometimes. It, it definitely does. I mean, I've gone through and people are like, I don't know what happened here, and then I have to go back and find out exactly what happened, why the, change, why the data changed. And it might be simple, right? It might be easy to see through the reports, or you might have to do a lot of digging to figure out what, what happened. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Thanks a lot, Andre, for uh, this interview. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, no it's great to have you here on Web Marketing Tito, and thanks for your time. Uh, I just wanted to maybe finish with um, some best practice advice you could give like to some less experimenter, exper experimented implementers. <laughs> Sorry for my English. No worries. Um, the one thing is to always test what you think is going to happen. So all these new features and functionalities of Google Analytics, it's always good to try to implement it and see what are the results that you get out of it yeah. um, in terms of the reports, right? So events can be very simple, right, uh, to, to implement. But may, you know, first time implementers have never implemented an event before, they should implement a test event See how it fires using those, you know, um, those uh, those debugging tools that we mentioned, like Wasp, and then also then take a look at the reports and see what type of information you get. Right? Mm -hmm. um, see, for example, if I send out a page view and an event, what does my data look like? Does it look like just 
uh, uh, not just on you know um, at the events report, but maybe perhaps your visits, your visitors, your bounce rate as well. Maybe because a lot of new people don't realize that events affect bounce rate. Well, if they actually look at the reports and they isolate it down to just one visit, their one test visit, they can see exactly how that one event affected all other metrics and yeah. dimensions and everything else. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important to just, you know, not just go ahead and implement it and then find out later, right, that, oh, you didn't realize there's a side effect. It really yeah, is, yeah. you know, creating your own test, sand, what we call a sandbox, a, a place where you can play around with yeah. different features and functionalities. Try it out, narrow it down to only, you know, just one visit, and then really looking at all the other data to see how it, uh, how it plays out. Yeah, great advice. And, and how do you, do you set up that test? Uh, I'll usually set up like a separate Google Analytics account yeah. um, and a separate you know test website that I have, um, and then to really kind of narrow it down to my specific visit because when I'm maybe sending about you know five or ten visits to it, what I'll do is I'll clear all my cookies, right? Start brand new fresh visitor. I'll use campaign tags, to, uh, so I'll land on whichever page I want to land on with specific campaign tags. And then when I and then do my tests, right? I I, I document out exactly what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hit this page. I will then fire this event with this custom dimension, and then here's what I think will happen. Yeah. Right. And so you can go back to it once you go and see yeah. the results. Exactly. Then I can then apply an advanced segment so they get that one specific visit, and then I can see you know what did that visit do. I can look at the events reports. I can look at all the reports and see how my data appears. So really, it's that's you know. Simple to, to more complex implementations, you know, it's really understanding how the tool works, how it's going to collect data, and how it's going to report it, and the only way to do that is to test and, and play around with the tool. So. Okay. Well, great. Thanks, Andre. The, you provided us with lots of uh, interesting uh, and great advices. Uh, thanks for, for this interview again. Uh, and. Uh, have a good day. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. It was a pleasure doing uh, this interview with you. And, Thanks. Uh, hopefully, I'll be on again sometime soon. <laughs> <laughs> et merci à vous tous uh, qui me suivez sur Web Marketing Tuto. N'hésitez pas à vous abonner et à liker la vidéo si elle vous plaît et à poser vos questions uh, en commentaire. Et je vous dis à très bientôt. Ciao. So, yeah, I had to finish in English. I didn't. No, no worries. No worries. No, so, so how many uh, of these uh, interviews we need?